neuromarketing research involves the use of techniques from the neurosciences. In this video, we'll be looking at one of the most commonly used techniques in neuromarketing research, the electroencephalogram, or EEG. Traditional marketing research techniques usually ask research participants for explicit feedback about the test material. In a neuromarketing research study using EEG, instead of asking consumers about their reactions to the test material, techniques are used to capture the underlying brain responses during the test. These brain responses can be used to gauge reactions during the test to guide business decisions without asking for explicit feedback from the research participants. Let's have a look at how this might work. EEG is a measure of electrical signals that the brain generates. The brain consists of billions of cells called neurons, which interconnect in very complex ways. Neurons communicate with each other by passing electrical signals along the connecting fibres. While these signals are very small, usually in the millionths of a volt, they can be picked up on the surface of the head by using some very sensitive equipment. This whole process is called taking an electroencephalogram, or EEG, and it's done on a routine basis all around the world. Typically, researchers record the brain electrical activity using a headset or cap like this one here. There are a number of soft felt sensors spread around the inside of the cap. These sensors, which are called electrodes, are slightly wetted after the cap is put on and they touch the surface of the head to pick up those very small electrical signals. There are 40 of those sensors in this cap. Each of those sensors picks up activity in a different area of the head so that we can get an overall measure of activity in different regions. In many studies we may pick up signals from other areas on the head such as the earlobes or around the eyes. The signals are conducted along these cables to an amplifier which converts the signals into a digital signal which can be stored on a computer. When all of the electrodes are picking up a signal, we can start to see the brain activity as it comes off the top of the head. We can see one line from each electrode, so in this case we can see 40 signals coming from the cap. The top traces represent activity towards the front of the head, and as we move down the screen, we're showing activity towards the back of the head. As you can see, the signals are changing all the time, with many peaks and troughs occurring every second. We need to apply a number of signal processing techniques to this raw data to obtain meaningful information. However, there's a couple of things we can readily see in this data. Firstly, we can see that every once in a while there is a large peak in the sensors towards the front of the head. These are eye blinks, and this is actually a signal coming from the muscles around the eyes. You can see that this signal is much larger than the brain activity signal so we'll need to remove this signal in our analysis. Let's have a look at what happens when our test subject closes their eyes. You can see that the signal changes with the eyes closed. It actually slows down, particularly towards the back of the head where most of the visual processing takes place. There's less peaks and troughs per second and the activity actually becomes more rhythmic. If we freeze this data for a moment, we can see that there are about 10 of these peaks and troughs per second. This is called alpha activity, and it's a good indication that the brain is not working hard. With the eyes closed, there's less information entering the brain, and this signal shows that the brain is less active. When the eyes open, the signal shows that active processing starts up again. We can look for some of these kinds of signals later on to indicate some of the kinds of processes that we're interested in gauging in our test. Once we've collected our data, there's two very different ways of representing our EEG signals. One approach is to view all of the signals across the head simultaneously. In this example, we can see the averaged response of a group of people listening to music. We can clearly see how the activity in the front parts of the brain is changing in time with the music. 
Another approach is to view the data from one electrode at a time. In this example, we're seeing the response of a single person viewing a brand logo. This type of data is called an event-related potential, or ERP. The entire trace lasts less than a second. The brand is presented here, and we can see a strong response, or potential, in this part of the brain at about 300 milliseconds after the brand is presented. This is called a P300 response, which indicates attention processes kicking in. We can examine the strength and timing of the P300 response to learn how a particular stimulus influences attention. So you can see how EEG data can be used to gain some very deep and useful insights about reactions to a test stimulus without asking a single question.